actually uh, use telemedicine to discuss the issue and, and the doctor would actually evaluate the patient with the nurse's help in the emergency room, just right there on the fly, which was helpful. We also had telemedicine for psychiatry. And I think we still use that some for psychiatry at Hugh Chatham in the emergency room aspect. But so it's been around, but you're right. Since the COVID thing, it really has um, gotten into more just primary care issues. Is virtual care covered by insurance and is copay the same as, as if it was an in-person office visit? Well, I do know that it's it's uh, covered by most insurances. There may be a couple out there that don't, but most most insurances, and I think including um, Medicare, uh, cover the visit. Laura may be able to speak better as far as like a copay aspect. Yeah, the, and I think the visits are subject to a typical copay like you would have with a regular visit, but um, in most cases, I think most major insurances are accepting them, and there actually have been, um, they've they've lightened some of the restrictions with telemedicine because of COVID-19, just so they can create access to care for people who need it. Um, so, so we've been fortunate that we've been able to, to offer that. Do you see a lot of parents that use this for pediatric? Uh... I have. Um, I would say at this point, just in the patients I've seen, if I had to take a guess, I'd say 20% of what I've seen has been um, pediatrics and stuff. And the kids do seem to be pretty involved with being able to get on the screen and say, hey, and they can see themselves, you know, reflected as they're doing it. So it's been pretty fun. I, I've enjoyed the pediatric visits and a lot of pediatric medicine that's not severe issues can be handled over virtual care. I mean, we, we, we handle a lot that way and it, it's, it's a benefit. I, I kind of wish we could, like you said, we need to get the word out there that it is available because I don't want, I don't want patients not going cared for, especially our pediatric population. And, and while we have uh, you and Laura on the phone with us, you know, and because I know people are getting weary of hearing about COVID, but you know, from a medical professional standpoint, you know, any, any advice, any uh, insight that you want to give us as we close here on what we're dealing with here at COVID-19? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, go, go, you, you, go on, you want to start, Ashley? No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that, you know, it's, it's the, the three W's that you keep hearing about is, you know, wear your mask, wash your hands and, and the social, you know, socially distance yourself, physically distance yourself. I mean, I think those are the three important things to remember. Um, I think the other important thing is we're talking about delaying care is, is understanding that, that our facility um, has been really proactive, I think during all of COVID-19 and ensuring that any of our um, kind of, visitor restrictions, policies that we have in place um, are, are where they need to be at, at any point in time. And so um, I think what patients need to know is if they do need care, um, I would say that, that the hospital, our hospital and our practices are probably some of the safest places you can be because we're so diligent about, um, about what our process and protocols are. So, um, so we are, you know, we, we've really seen a lot of folks who um, who had, I think, initially um, decided to forego care, um, make the decision to come back. And, and those tests, um, you know, annual, just your annual wellness visits, physicals, um, you know, preventive care is still really, really important um, to get done. So, um, and some of those things are things you can't do virtually. So just understanding that we're, we're taking every necessary precaution um, that we can to help make our environment the safest um, possible for patients and for our staff. Kind of just to echo Laura a little bit that yeah, Hugh Chatham has been so aggressive from the inception of this. Once it once it came out and we we knew that this was going to be a, a long term issue and something we needed to be uh, ahead of. The Hugh Chatham has been amazing at, at forming a team that that's all they handle. I mean, they this team works only on COVID related issues and we have updates and meetings every week at the end of the week to kind of brief us on the changes. And I guess my advice is that it is always changing what we know. This is the first time that this particular virus has been seen in human beings. So I get questions all the time in the clinic. I have to say, we don't know yet. You know, we're, we're hoping to know things about antibody testing and what it means if you're positive. We just don't know at this time. But the good news in this day of technology is it's easy to stay up to date with what is known 
as long as you're going to true and good sources and things like the CDC. There's some fantastic links. If you go to the Hugh Chatham website, there's a COVID link that links you directly to all the COVID resources that we know of and have verified to be good sources of information. 